Hello, 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 friends. Welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator tutorial. If you are watching this episode and followed along with me, congratulations, you made it to the airliners. Today is an exciting day for me. We are starting to discuss the airliners and Airbus A320 is going to be our first one. As you see in the background, our plane is being prepared by the ground crew. We are having our catering truck loading the food for the passengers. Baggage is also being loaded and we have a ground power unit. Also, we do have a jetway connection to let our passengers in when we are ready. So, what we are going to do? Because of the complexity of this aircraft, I think I'm going to divide this into three or four parts. Today we are going to discuss and see the general cockpit layout and how we power the aircraft. If we have some time left, we may look into the flight planning page and the um, MCDU which is the flight management computer in Airbus language but I doubt that we will have time because this thing has a very complex cockpit so before we start thanks for joining me again I appreciate all the feedback and the comments that you guys are leaving to me it is really encouraging to see that you are enjoying the content and I think it's worth celebrating that the channel has now 610 subscribers by the time I started to record this video. Without further ado, let's jump into the cockpit, shall we? As you see, the aircraft is in a cold and dark state. We are going to go through all the panels and displays here and take a look at all the buttons and what we need to do to get her up in the air. Just a disclaimer, this is not the default Airbus A320. I am using a well-known community mod that's called Fly-by-Wire A320NX. I will put the, dis the link to the mod into the description field. I think this is one of the best mods for Microsoft Flight Simulator and it's a community driven project uh, providing this beautiful aircraft with improved systems and functions for free and I don't want to go back to the default one after seeing this aircraft so this is what we are going to use uh, the cockpit layout will be the same for the default one but the default one is missing some of the systems that I will be sharing with you so bear that in mind if you don't want to install the mod first things first to power on the aircraft we need to turn on the batteries and that is done in this BZ overhead panel so this is our overhead panel there is two battery there are two battery switches here battery one and two first thing is to turn them on and in Airbus when the airplane is powered you see it's showing the states of the buttons or enunciating the states of the buttons so that means these are the fuel pumps, one, two, this is left, this is right, and these are the center tanks, and the pumps are at off at the moment, but we will come there um, after powering. External power, we already have an external power unit connected, so we can turn that on, and you will see these screens are performing a self-test. This is not happening in the default aircraft, and our fuel truck is here which I called for if I can get this out of the way as you see there is the fuel truck so I will take some more fuel just for fun while we are doing this and close this window go back into the cockpit so the self test is completed now we have displays so let's let's discuss I, I was just doing stuff uh, without rec recognizing that I'm doing things that I will be speaking about. These three knobs here are the display brightness switches for the PFD on the pilot side and 
this display is called ND navigation display so these buttons are adjusting the brightness for those this one over here is adjusting the floodlight under this over um, under this panel you can turn it on it's daylight so it shouldn't make any difference these two over here will adjust the brightness of the lights and the screens the lights are around the text and the knobs and the screen is that screen and these two screens that shows the barometric pressure okay I think so far so good I, I felt like I'm going too fast but there is a lot to cover over, over, over here this section of the airplane is called pedestal and we can take a look uh, from a top-down view so these two are controlling the display brightness of these two screens which is called ecam displays upper ecam and lower ecam and the purpose of these screens are to give you some stats about your engine status and some other uh, aircraft systems on the bot at the bottom one and you can go through those we will look into these uh, by pressing these buttons and there is an automation that displays the relevant information when we are trying to do something uh, for instance trying to start the engines it will switch to the engine page when we start to do that okay so display brightness is taken care of now and we have two more lights this guy over here is the if you if you take a closer look main panel floodlight and integrated light for main panel and pedestal which is uh, increasing the brightness of the buttons and uh, the throttle quadrant and so on and so forth and one last floodlight here is at the back and I think if I change the time you will you will see it better let's make it like night time for a second and you will see what I mean by those so this guy over here is adjusting the brightness of these floodlights under the main control panel this one is adjusting the brightness I think it's yeah adjusting the brightness of the pedestal this one is the floodlight that's shining from the back of the cockpit and as I said these are adjusting the brightness of uh, the panel and then the screens on the main control panel it's called MCP so if I say MCP I'm referring to this main control panel which is the autopilot controls this one over here is adjusting the pilot's display and if you take a look at the bottom you will see the light amount is changing and there is one for the co-pilot over here too so this is the the brightness settings of the displays and the floodlights and whatnot back to the morning okay so let's start with overhead panel go from there one by one and if you are a careful person I think you already noticed that my displays are not showing anything at the moment and it's saying map not available this is also uh, coming from the mod if we go to the overhead panel the, we'll just do a panel scan from left to right to explain what this over panel has to offer this adhere system is the GPS system of the aircraft Airbus has three GPS radios and to let the aircraft know its position in the world we need to align the GPS to do that we flick these buttons to nav and it, they will say align at the top so this means now aircraft is aligning itself with the G satellites and on the ECAM display the upper one you will say IRS al in align 7 minutes so in about 7 minutes the aircraft will know its position so that's one of the things that you need to do first uh, before even starting to plan your flight without knowing your position that's not gonna make sense okay 
these are the flight control this is the flight control panel right now they don't have any function uh, the buttons can be operated but I haven't heard anything around this um, this is evacuation system so it is also animated but I don't think it's doing anything emergency generator test they are working on this so there will be some tests um, that emergency electrical power manual on emergency generator generator one GPWS is ground proximity warning system so this is going to tell you if you are too close to the ground and uh, play an audible warning uh, and it shows fault now because the GPS is not aligned and if you are landing with flaps 3 this needs to be turned on uh, and it, it will do some some other stuff uh, but we will discuss this this is really really a little bit advanced uh, at the moment we are just going to discuss what the buttons does um, oxygen system for the cabin and crew and the passengers and these are the cabin calls when you press on them it plays a chime uh, to the cabin to warn them for certain stuff like takeoff or landing so on so forth this is your wipers when it's raining you can turn on the wipers to wipe your windows this is the rain rain repellent system which is not operational at the moment in this aircraft in the middle at the top you have your fire systems and they have individual tests which usually is performed in real life even before starting the engines or the starting the auxiliary power unit okay so below that this is your hydraulic system and engine one hydraulic pump pump I'm sorry uh, PTU is power transfer unit uh, engine 2 hydraulic pump, pump electrical pump electrical pump and there's a switch here to turn them on manually to override it below that is your fuel system your fuel pumps left wing right wing and then center tanks so you turn them on to otherwise you won't be able to start the engines over here is your electrical panel it is showing your generator 1 generator 2 it's showing fault because our engines are not running battery 1 and battery 2 that we discussed and the battery displays like how many volts the batteries has uh, the bus and these are uh, lighting up when the bus is linked and connected like the bus tie is now auto you can turn it off uh, APU generator you can turn it off or on it's on by default by the way Airbus is uh, an automated aircraft and these are some over I think these are some overwrite switches or test switches I have to look it up uh, don't remember exactly but they don't have any functions at the moment over here is your air conditioning system to make your com uh, passengers comfortable pack flow is the air flow in the system low high or normal and this is the temperature setting for the cockpit forward cabin and aft cabin engine bleed switches uh, ram air if you have that one hot air pack 2 pack 1 these are the zones of the air, uh, AC and the APU bleed APU bleed is the important thing here if you don't turn on your APU bleed you won't be able to start your engines engines are using the bleed air from the auxiliary power unit which is a small generator at the back of the aircraft it's a turbine generator uh, the engines are using this uh, bleed air to to spool the fans in the turbine uh, for the initial start of the engine so if it's turned off you can't start your engines even if you have fuel even if you 
turn on the ignition and turn on the engine switches nothing will happen below that is the anti-ice system wing engine one and two and probe window heat is the probes are the um, same as the pitot tubes in general aviation aircraft that measures your airspeed and the window heat is your windscreen window okay um, cabin pressure settings which are not working at the moment and then below that is your lights strobe beacon wing we can turn on the nail light because we have power to the aircraft you turn on the beacon right before you are ready to start your engines runway turn off lights landing lights left and right and nose wheel steering uh, nose right or light or nose wheel steering light which can provide taxi and takeoff lighting this is your APU master switch to turn on the auxiliary power unit and this is the start button to start the generator overhead lighting which lights up this panel ice indication and standby compass light dome light is a dome light that that one over there provides some light to the cabin when it's dark you, you have two settings dim or bright okay if I can turn it off now and then this is the enunciator test lights which will light up all the enunciation on all of the panels for the pilot to see if there are any lights that are not functioning normally so that they can ask for technical uh, help or maintenance team to fix those okay and then you can set them to bright or dim for the rest of the flight this is your seat belt sign this is your no smoking sign and this is your emergency exit lights that you need to arm before you start flying on the right hand side of the overhead panel uh, flight control switches they turn on and off but I don't know if they have any functions I haven't read the release notes of the latest uh, re version of the mod uh, cargo smoke test which is the fire test for your cargo compartments this is again ventilation system for the cabin and the cabin fans and these are the switches to manually start the engines if you cannot start them for uh, with the with the automatic starter and the right hand side wiper for the co-pilot and the rain repellent so that's the overhead panel i know it's too complicated or it looks intimidating but there is a few buttons or there are a few buttons that we need to deal with uh, when we are starting the aircraft when we come to the let's just start with the with the main control panel MCP so this is basically your autopilot panel these two knobs this is your range knob that changes the range on of the navigation display the ND in a minute we will be seeing our aircraft there so it will make more sense when we have uh, a visual but this is changing your range of your display and as you see the rings are changing the distances so yeah right right now we have the GPS aligned and that uh, message is, uh, this is gone from the ECAM display so this is your range this is your ADF or VOR radio receiver if you want to fly VOR that's completely possible with A320 uh, this is the plan mode to check your flight plan and initial legs of the uh, each and every leg of that flight plan not initial I'm sorry um, nav mode is navigation mode which gives you a 360 degree radial and your position and if we had a flight plan it was also displayed here this is your VOR radio and your alignment remember from the Cessna tutorial there is a line that connects, uh, connects uh, to this line and makes it a hole I haven't tuned into a VOR station so we are not displaying anything here and this is your landing system display when you are approaching to an airport 
uh, for ILS approach. So these are the mods, but mostly we will be using arc and plan mode and maybe the LS mode when we are landing. Let's leave it at uh, LS. This is your barometric pressure setting. You can switch between inches uh, mercury or hectopascals for European countries by clicking to the uh, bottom of the switch and the switch is a rotate this not the switch this is a knob that you can rotate to set the barometric pressure to the barometric pressure of the airport or you can simply hit the B key on your keyboard and it will set everything for you this is your uh, standby PFD just in case something happens to this one this little guy helps you see your attitude and your altimeter and your speed this black one switches between Mac units and nuts uh, for the airspeed this is your heading bug this is your speed bug and this is a two-way switch if you press up you'll see this dot that means your speed is managed by the autopilot if you press down you can manually set your desired speed and the aircraft will fly at that speed until you change it okay and when you see a dot in an Airbus cockpit it's usually I'll turn it back. it's usually managed by the autopilot if you don't see a dot next to the uh, unit then that means it's controlled by uh, by the pilot these are not acting normally because I don't have a flight plan entered but uh, we'll come to that this is your autopilot to on and off buttons this aircraft that has two autopilot uh, systems and this aircraft can do automatic landings uh, which is also known as cat 3 ILS landings you need to turn on the autopilots to do that this is your altitude setting and your altitude selector now to set your desired altitude by default it's a thousand increments to change it to hundreds you need to click to the black uh, section of the knob and then you can change it in hundred uh, increments okay this changes from ultimate uh, altitude from um, feet to metric units and again same thing happens for altitude too if you want to manually manage your altitude you need to press down and then that dot disappears which means now you are in charge of altitude and you are controlling it if there is a dot next to it that means the aircraft is going to take it from your flight plan and your vertical profile that you programmed and fly that altitude okay and same settings for the co-pilot side side over here these buttons here this is the constraints which will display the restrictions when you put your flight plan in for those waypoints like a speed restriction or an altitude restriction this is a VORD switch that shows the VOR stations nearby this will show the RNAV waypoints in other words GPS waypoints this will show the NDB stations that are nearby and this will show the airports that are nearby on your uh, navigation display I usually keep it at constraints to see what restrictions I have uh, in the coming waypoints and you usually have to turn it on after you power the aircraft uh, some companies have uh, policies around this for the pilots to turn it on automatically so if we scan down here this is your landing gear indicator the middle one is your front uh, wheel or nose wheel and these two are the wing wheels and when you see green that means they are locked and down and same will happen when they are retracted this is your auto brake setting when you are landing you set your auto brakes 
to low medium or max if you have a really short runway so that the aircraft will break in full power this is the chronometer that you can use to track how many minutes or hours your flight will take or sometimes if ATC says 30 minutes from now uh, the, the clearance will be invalid and you need to ask for another clearance so you can use that to measure that 30 minutes and again this chronometer is not working uh, in the default aircraft this is the UTC time and this is the estimated time to uh, I'm sorry this is I think estimated time to your route when you plug that in this is your gear lever and this is your brake pressure uh, display or gauge so when you set the par parking brake the display moves zero means your parking brake is off and when it's pressurized that means your parking brake is on and this is not working for the tow brakes yet but hopefully in the future it will down below is the pedestal and we discussed the brightness setting switches uh, this switches I think doesn't do anything at the moment but this is to switch uh, captains or first officers displays uh, to either side they don't have any function right now TOO config is to check automatically your takeoff configuration as you see when I press it the aircraft started to say flaps are not in takeoff config position so this is your uh, check to see if you are fully configured for takeoff engine page is going to display the engine information like oil pressure fuel used uh, pressure in the engines like the bleed air or engine bleeds uh, temperature and N1 and N2 which is the the turbine blades and one is the outer and two is the inner blades of the engine this is the temperature outside air temperature uh, the clock and then the gross weight is the weight of the aircraft bleed page is showing the bleed air system right now the engines are not generating any bleed and APU is not generating anything so that's why it's not displaying anything at the moment this page is not functional yet it will be in the future electrical panel as well hydraulic panel as well fuel page is showing your fuel on board 12,760 kilograms fuel on board and this is showing your fuel flow when the engines are running how many kilograms of fuel you're burning per minute and how much fuel you have on your wing tanks and center tank APU page is displaying the auxiliary power unit generator status it's turned off right now we don't get to see anything this page is under construction right now door page is functional it's showing the doors that are open if it's orange if it's an open door uh, I'm sorry if it's orange it's an open door it represents an open door if it's a green box around the door that means the door is closed and locked or pressurized whatever it is called this is your wheel se pressure settings and brake temperatures are displayed here too front wheel left and right wheels and the uh, tire pressures of those wheels flight control check is the flight control surfaces that helps you to check your pitch your yaw and your rudder to make sure they are operational and clear button clears the warnings from the ECAM upper ECAM display this is the status page and it says normal and recall recalls the last error that's displayed if you are interested in seeing it or if you missed what it was displaying there and to clear that you hit the clear button and we will talk about the MCDU so I'm not going to dive into that yet down below these are your radios you have two radios here and one at the overhead panel I believe uh, a little bit to the top which 
I cannot see now but these are the diffuse panel or breaker board um, of the overhead panel but we are not worried about that yet okay back to the pedestal so your radios as I said you can turn them on and off for some reason display is not showing anything at the moment but hopefully this is a bug that they will fix uh, they are turned on by default this is your radio settings VHF 1, 2, 3, HF 1, 2, internal and cabin they are not functional at the moment let's see we discussed the floodlights I need to get a better reel to discuss the other stuff alright over here this is your weather radar this is showing the weather and you can display it on pilots uh, navigation display or first officers with this switch and this is uh, the pre wind shear predefined wind shear warning system or wind shear system I am not sure if it's functioning yet and when you switch from WX to WX plus T this displays the traffic information I'm not sure if the turbo map mode and map mode are functional yet uh, I don't think they are this is your ground spoilers you arm them before takeoff like this so that in a rear case of rejected takeoff the speed brakes come on automatically when you hit the brakes this is your flaps it has three levels or oh, I'm sorry four levels of flaps flaps will require hydraulic power to operate so even if you power on the, electri uh, the aircraft uh, the electrical power is not going to move your flaps an inch even if you change the status or if you even, even if you um, move the lever this is your engine starter or ignition switch and these are your engine switches rudder trim parking brake which is set to on at the moment and over here is your transponder your uh, squat code is entered here when it's given by the ATC and then you turn it to auto when you're on the ground and turn it to on before, prior to takeoff and this is the altitude reporting function of TCAS and you can set it to standby when you are on the ground and TARA when you are about to take off and you can leave this at auto if you want to uh, that still will do its job this is your trim takeoff trim setting your uh, throttle left and right and that's about it for the pedestal I'm not sure if this is working this is the cockpit door button to lock the cockpit door I'm not sure if it's functional yet but they are modeling the interior of the aircraft so at some point we will have a working cockpit door over on this side uh, you have your side stick and I think that's that's it for for the buttons and the cockpit layout uh, for Airbus A320 so I think we discussed what we discussed so far is how to align the GPS how to turn on the batteries and how to turn on the external power but let's do one more thing and let's uh, start the ATU, APU uh, before we wrap up the video so the APU master switch is over here you have to turn it on and wait because now uh, the ECAM display should switch to APU automatically if I haven't touched these buttons but I did and now I think it's not displaying anything so this is your APU page and you will see a flap open message which is literally a flap at the back of the aircraft that needs to open so that you can fire up the APU and that is, this is the exhaust of the APU as you see it says flap open now we can go ahead and turn on the starter and if we get close to the tail I'm pretty sure you will hear the APU spooling and 
on the display you will see the turbine spooling and the EGT rising exhaust gas temperature this needs to hit uh, one zero or hundred percent and then you will see the generator will kick in and start displaying some volts so this is another way of powering this aircraft if you don't want the ground power and these are some speed limits placed on here in, in the cockpit in a plate uh, flaps 1 speed 230 knots uh, flaps 2 speed is 220 or below and I'm not sure why it's all displaying 230 and uh, full 230 230 I don't think I'm this might be the right information I'm not sure I need to look it up I can't remember them on, on top of my head off top of my head one thing I missed is this terrain on radar switch so when you turn this on when you take off it will display the terrain and show the topographic map uh, on the ND and you usually turn it on before takeoff as you see now APU generator is providing power uh, my autopilot is going crazy after the APU is started you need to turn on the APU bleed so now we are ready to really push back if we had a flight plan we are ready to push back and start our engines I am going to call that pushback truck off because I don't want to go anywhere yet and the jetway is disconnected automatically uh, when we ask for pushback so now we can start the engines and wrap up the video we need to turn the beacon light on and to start the engines make sure you have your APU bleed over here and now we can turn the ignition switch to on and switch this to the engine page this goes automatically if I haven't touched this but because I touched the buttons to show you uh, I don't know how it goes back uh, but we will take a look at it again in one of the episodes of Airbus A320 so ignition starter switch is to the start position and you flick the engine 2 on switch and let's take a look at the engine from the outside if I can get a good wheel I think this is the best I can get you will see the engine I think engine 2 is the right winning right engine so it started to spool and you started to hear the uh, sound now the heat blur means now engine has fuel and it will spool further until it fully starts and we can check the progress over here at the engine display page as you see the engine should stabilize around 54% N2 or 59 I think it's 59 we will see here in a second and the idle is around 19 yeah 58.6 so I was close now you see the hydraulic power transfer unit is operational which means now we have hydraulic power that means we can extend the flaps and this sound you are hearing is the PTU kicking in now we can start engine number one and take a look at it as well the NEO engines are starting slower than the previous version of Airbus A320 it takes more time to start the engines in this aircraft than the previous A320s but it's okay we have time we are not in a rush so as you see engine 1 is now starting we can check the status here it should stabilize at around 58 or close to 
engine 2. We are getting there, 16, and it should stop at around 19 as well. There you go. Now, both engines are stable, which means we can put the ignition switch to normal, back to normal. Now, because we have engine power, we can go ahead and turn off the APU bleed and APU master and turn the APU off and we can get rid of the external power as well alright guys so this is the startup sequence of Airbus A320 with all the cockpit buttons and the layout and which switch knob button does what type of information in the next part we will dive into the MCDU this guy over here and we will plan a flight and we will see how to enter it into the MCDU and then maybe we can go ahead and start the engines again and do a proper uh, flight uh, setup or pre-flight setup uh, of the aircraft uh, in the next episode and go over some of the information that's covered in this part because it's a lot and uh, I highly think of uh, going through at least the main ones one more time as a reminder so I think this is going to be it for today's tutorial this is part one if you want to get notified when part two is out please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and turn on the notifications in the next part we will be entering a flight plan as I said and we will configure the aircraft for pushback and taxi and we'll see those uh, startup sequence like cold and dark to taxi startup sequence of Airbus A320 uh, in the meantime while I'm preparing these videos I might throw some GA aircraft videos in there I received a question about the mixture probe RPM and throttle and how they are used during climb, descent and cruise so I might put a video about uh, that information uh, just to fill in the gaps when I'm getting ready to record the other part of A320 but it is going to be fun and congratulations guys you made it all the way to the airliners my plan going forward is to finish A320 and then jump into Boeing 747-8 I want to finish the default version aircraft of the simulator first and I might swing back and take a look at the aircraft that are that are coming with the deluxe and premium deluxe editions of the game and maybe just record some tutorials about those aircraft. Let me know in the comments which one of those is uh, the one you are most interested in if you have premium or premium deluxe versions of the game uh, I would rather do something that you are interested in about seeing than guessing it myself so please leave me a comment and let me know okay guys thanks for watching I will see you in the next video